This year marks my sixth year celebrating International Youth Day as the United Nations Secretary General's Envoy on Youth. And it is bittersweet knowing that this will also be my last. The time has come for me to wrap up my mandate as the Envoy on Youth. Serving as your envoy has been the biggest honor of my life. I am departing this role with a great sense of achievement, fulfillment and gratitude. More than anything else, I am proud to be leaving the youth agenda at the United Nations better than I found it. It is incredible to think how far we have come. By mobilizing unprecedented levels of political support, we have been able to build a sustainable structure with a dependable resource base, ensuring that the youth agenda continues to flourish. As the new United Nations Youth Office comes to life, I have nothing but the utmost confidence that this work will reach even greater heights. But getting here has not been an easy task. From the first day I assumed the role as envoy until today, my team and I have worked incredibly hard to tackle financial, administrative, institutional and political challenges in moving the needle on the UN's work with and for young people. Any and all of the success attributed to the role of the envoy on youth, I dedicated to my formidable team who showed up and delivered each and every day, despite many uncertainties, including job insecurity, unsustainable planning grounds, and a lack of equal recognition due to age and hierarchy. Together, we grew the Office of the Envoy to be an exemplary place. We put innovation and creativity at the heart of our work and showed how to achieve maximum results with minimum resources. We showed that when young people are given the opportunity, they can do incredible things to challenge the status quo and reframe traditional ways of thinking and working. Sometimes we failed, but we always aspired to walk the talk. We said no to unpaid internships. We dismantled hierarchies and challenged bureaucratic structures. We built partnerships united under the same noble vision, and we worked to strengthen intergenerational trust. And through it all, we insisted on working with and for young people in all their diversity, leaving no youth behind. The work we did to amplify the voices of the most marginalized and to create platforms for young women and girls, young people with disabilities, young indigenous people, young refugees, and queer young people all over the world are some of the most meaningful experiences I've had in this role. Through the first ever UN Youth Strategy, Youth 2030, we got an opportunity to embed these values within the entire UN system. Not only did we guide and advise our UN agencies, funds, programs and country offices to meaningfully work with and for young people, we also developed a mechanism through which the UN system is held accountable for the commitments made at the highest levels. We shifted tables for keynote speakers to become keynote listeners. Today, because of our collective effort, youth participation is no longer a choice, but a necessity at the United Nations. As I hand over the baton and we enter this new chapter with the United Nations Youth Office, I cannot help but to feel immensely proud to have been part of this history. I thank the Secretary General for his trust in me and for giving me freedom to execute my vision for this role. He gave me permission to misbehave and so I did, more often than you can imagine. I thank the Deputy Secretary General for her guidance and mentorship and for believing in the leadership of young women like myself. I thank the colleagues in the UN system who supported and uplifted my work. The professional achievements in the last six years have been many, and none of those could have been possible without the understanding and unwavering support of my family. There were times when I had to make my role as a mother, wife, daughter, and sister secondary to prioritize my work. I am forever grateful to have my family in my life. Last, but certainly not least, thank you to the millions of young people I had the honor to work with in the past years in any shape or form, online or offline. 
I mean awe of your courage and the way that you unapologetically demand transformational change and radical shifts in power. Thank you for welcoming me into your schools, communities and villages during my travels around the world. Your trust, encouragement and friendship have remained my guiding light throughout this entire experience. I strived my best to lead with empathy, compassion, openness and integrity. I hope I did not let you down. This is not a goodbye. It is a see you later. Because regardless of what my next professional adventure will be, I will always be a champion for young people. The work to meaningfully engage the world's largest generation of young people is far from done. There are still myths, misconceptions and many barriers that hinder their participation when it comes to making decisions about their lives and our world. Yet, amidst all the challenges and uncertainties, I am certain that young people remain our greatest hope to achieve a better future for all. That is why we must never stop highlighting the power of youth leadership. In this spirit, for one final time, I'm honored to turn over all of my digital platforms throughout the month of August this year, celebrating the diversity of ways young people lead as positive agents of change.